Friends, welcome back. Um, it's a sunny day, but a rainy day here where I live in, in Rosanales. I hope you have a good day wherever you are. And um, our message this morning will come from Matthew, um, Matthew the first chapter. And we're going to read from um, verse 18. So it's the birth of Jesus Christ. This was how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she found out that she was going to have a baby by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was a man who always did what was right, but he did not want to disgrace Mary publicly, so he made plans to break the engagement privately. While he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife, for it's by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this happened in order to make what the Lord had said through the prophet come true, a virgin will become pregnant and have a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God's with us. So when Joseph woke up, he married Mary, as the angel of the Lord had told him to do, but he had no sexual relations with her before she gave birth to a son, and Joseph named him Jesus. So friends, that's our scripture reading um, this morning. Now, it's a very interesting passage, and the passage has different um, uh, 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 different problems th that we need to address, and uh, but also a, a beautiful message. Matthew was a storyteller, and he's telling us a story about the well. It's probably a war between the the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, and um, this two kingdoms is constantly. Um, in a fight with each other. And now here, uh, with the birth of Jesus, the kingdom of light, uh, the king of the kingdom of light, is uh, born on earth. And he's coming to earth, and uh, he's going to make a huge impact on the whole of the planet. Um, so that's the story. And this is how it happens. It's just a simple story and, and simple people. And that's the beauty about Matthew. It's about the small people um, with such a huge and, and, and very important task on this earth. Small people like me and you are involved in the story of God. And, um, and, he, is, and he is taking us in in very important roles. In, in 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 this whole building of the kingdom of God. Now, the first interesting thing, um, friends, is uh, is the virgin birth. Now, um, why is it important? Well, it's probably not important in a sense if you think God can can uh, born his son out of any woman. It doesn't need to be uh, a virgin. So if God wanted to have his son being born on earth, um, he could have used any woman, uh, not, not necessarily a um, virgin. But the reason here is probably where it comes from. Uh, firstly, friends, we know that Mary was a virgin because she said that. There's no way to try uh, to prove in any other way. We know that Mary is a virgin because that's what she said, and, and, and that's that, that's what she told everybody, and that's what jo, uh, um, and that's what um, um, her husband knew as well. So it wasn't that uh, you know that we have to prove it in another way. But the interesting thing is that Matthew uses a passage from Isaiah uh, to prove that the Messiah would come from a virgin. Now, the story in Isaiah is all about um, the northern ten tribes and Syria who wanted to make war uh, to Judah and Benjamin, only two tribes. So remember that Benjamin and Judah were um, the nation of God that he elected long time ago 
and that's the descendants of David, and that's where the Messiah would come from. So at that stage in Isaiah, well, 700 years before the birth of Christ, um, the nation of God was in trouble, fierce trouble. Um, because the, the two nations and, and and you know that Samaria was their brothers actually it was the ten tribes it was, it was their brothers they wanted to fight against them with Syria and uh, they had no way to be able to fight this um, uh, huge armies that they have to face there was no way so that was a point where God's nation was, uh, you know, on the verge of distinction, of extinction. Um, so, and that's when I say, I say, there will be a young woman, not a virgin, not not in, in that sense, a young woman who will born a son, and that son will save um, the the nation of Judah, um, and will save the nation of God in, in essence. So Matthew is using that passage and he applies it to Jesus Christ. Now sometimes you can do it. Some of the, the, the writers, the authors of the Old Testament uses Old Testament passages that has nothing to do really with what's happening with them, but in, bring it in into the storyline. But in, in this sense, friends, it works because God um, will sometimes have one prophecy fulfilled several times over the years. So he fulfilled the prophecy at the time of, the, of this war and uh, he brought Ezekiel in and he was the king that saved um, the nation of Judah from destruction. Um, but now God will again again send a savior, somebody who will help his nation. And so eventually then Jesus came. And that's why Matthew could easily say, but that's another way that, that God brings fulfillment to his prophecy. In, he does it in Jesus Christ. And the young woman now is a virgin. And the son now, the savior, is from God. <clears throat> not from a human being. There's also a, another storyline <clears throat> that was probably also known at that, tate, at that time. There was a legend that Alexander the Great was also the son of a god, of a pagan god now, of Zeus, and that his mom conceived him through Zeus then. Um, and that's why he was there. So his mom wasn't necessarily a virgin at that stage when they say the legend goes that um, Alexander the Great was conceived from Zeus, the pagan god. But that's probably another story that Matthew had in mind to say, but the living God uses a, a young woman who is still a virgin um, to bring his son into the world to make sure that has no traces of a human husband um, in the whole thing, and that this person would really be God and the king of the kingdom of heaven. So that's why we have the whole, the important story of the virgin birth here, to show that Jesus is really the son of God. There's no doubt about it. And then the fact that Mary said and told the disciples and the disciples told everybody else. And that's why we know that um, Mary was a, was a virgin uh, when she, uh, she conceived Jesus. The second thing, friends, that's important here is the role of Joseph. Joseph, in, in, in that time, in, in ancient times, is that you were betrothed to a woman but you, before you live together. So it could have been a young girl and maybe an older husband and the family of the young girl could say, all right, this is your, this girl is going to be your wife one day and then they become engaged. But it was a stronger bond than our engagement today. So it was like a marriage, but they didn't live together. So they probably want the girl to grow up a little bit or for the man to to get his home built, don't know. Uh, but in any way, there was a lapse in time before the girl would move in with the husband. Then. And this is during that time 
that Mary became pregnant. So it was frowned upon because how did it happen? She, well, the only way that she could get pregnant is to have relations with another man uh, or a young man or a boy or whatever. And, um, and, and that was punishable with death in Old Testament. That was totally unacceptable. Um, but Joseph didn't want her to go through that hardship. So he decided if he can just stop the whole thing silently, uh, Mary will be okay. And that was his only concern at that moment. Till the Lord said to him, but no, 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 you have to marry her. And that's when he brought her into his house as if he was looking after the mother, the child, to give them protection, to give them a support system, and then to give a home to the Son of God. What a, what a wonderful privilege for Joseph to have that. And that's what Joseph did. And God also said to him, give the son the name of Yehusha. Um, and, um, and, and he did it because um, the Lord, that means the Lord saves. The Lord is going to save the people from their sins. So Jesus was actually called Yeshua, Yehoshua. Uh, in his time when he was on earth, he was never called Jesus. Jesus is the Greek form of the word. He was never called that. So um, in, in, in Aramaic, in, in times of, of, uh, of the Old Testament, when Jesus was on earth, he was called Yeshua, uh, probably. Um, so, in, 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 and uh, Joseph did that. He, he did all what he needed to do to make sure that the Son of God is protected, that he has the right name, and that his mother will have a place where she can be. So the whole Matthew is a storyteller and he's telling the story about the king of heaven and earth, the, the king of the universe, the, the king of the kingdom of God's arrival on earth and that there will be a, a lot of um, fights between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. There will be a, a lot of strife between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. But Jesus is the king of the kingdom of light, of the kingdom of heaven. And he is there and he is be God with us. So he's coming to be with us, save us from our sins and um, give us a new life and a new nation. Uh, and, and that's the happy beginning, friends, of the whole of Christianity. And that's what Matthew wanted to show us, the king, the new king, um, the king of peace, the king of hope, our king, uh, the king that will eventually die for us on the cross. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, what a wonderful passage to see um, how your son was conceived and how he was born on earth and how he had a mother and father um, that looked after him, Lord, and um, that he grew up to... Um, be your son and do the job of your son here on earth, Lord. We praise and thank you for your love, for your compassion for us, and for your son that you sent to us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.